Number 10. Vomiting water. Pufferfish are famous for their ability to inflate and their somewhat slow and clumsy swimming style. There are about 120 different species of pufferfish, and since they are kind of slow, their only means to deter predators is to make themselves as big as possible. They don't do this by sucking in air, but by quickly ingesting huge amounts of water and turning themselves into a big ball that nobody is able to swallow. People familiar with pufferfish, or that have seen them in an aquarium, will start to notice that sometimes their pufferfish will squirt water at them. But why? Are they playing? Are they scared? Some people think it's a feeding response. They might squirt water in exchange for food. Both puffers and triggerfish will also blow water on their food with powerful jets that turn the food over. A famous meme came out with a pufferfish seeming to vomit water. On March the 6th, 2019, the website Tokyo Web published an article entitled Non-Toxic Pufferfish in Hot Spring Water. The article included a photograph of the fish spitting up spring water. It's hard to know what exactly was going on, but it's probably not good since the pufferfish has blown itself up and is now releasing water. Hopefully it's not going to get eaten. Pufferfish will also of course have to release the water at some point when they get caught so fishermen will hold them in their hands until they release the water, making a sort of vomiting sound. Number 9. Lazy Parent Cuckoo Birds It's time to meet the planet's laziest and perhaps most clever mother. She is of course the cuckoo bird, and she is probably one of the most creative parents alive. The phenomenon is known as brood parasitism, and basically it means the cuckoo bird is a parasite. You see, when the cuckoo bird is about to lay eggs, she goes in search of another nest to leave her eggs in. She has to go on scouting trips to find a nest of another species she knows will be a good parent for her baby birds. Once she targets a nest, there is basically nothing the surrogate parent can do to stop her. Cuckoo birds are incredibly well adapted to being brood parasites, and it works in this disturbing and creative way. When the cuckoo birds hatch in their step parent's nest, they do it a little bit earlier than the other eggs. This will make them stronger, louder, and bigger than their would-be siblings. Because the most demanding baby birds get fed more, they have a stronger chance of surviving. It can be hard for the mother birds to tell which of the tiny birds is hers, and so the cuckoo chicks will get treated the same as the other babies. In effect, the cuckoo birds' babies will be stronger than the other babies in the nest, so they will get fed more and the other babies will perish. It's a bird-eat-bird -bird world out there, and the cuckoo mother is not going to put another species' babies ahead of her own. Sometimes, the mother cuckoo bird will even poke holes in the eggs of the host's nest when she leaves her own, ensuring only her babies are the ones to be fed. Now that's a really sly and underhanded strategy, but the animal kingdom is a rough and wild place. Number 8. Backward Running Mole Rats Yes, mole rats are some of the most disgusting creatures on the planet. The naked mole rat looks like a failed lab experiment that lost all its hair. They have unsightly, wrinkly skin, yellow fangs and beady eyes that almost look villainous. However, these animals do some incredible and very strange things. Their evolutionary traits are absolutely amazing. Not only do they live their entire life underground without the need for much oxygen, but they even have excellent hygiene. Inside a mole rat's burrow, you will find an actual bathroom, which is something that you can't say for most animals. They dig a specific tunnel strictly for use as a toilet. If that's not hygienic for an animal, I don't know what is. Compare that to most other wild animals, who just go whenever and wherever nature calls. Additionally, naked mole rats can run backwards just as fast as they can run forwards. Imagine breaking into a full sprint completely backwards with the same raw speed you get when running forwards. It's simply unbelievable. For just one more strange habit of the naked mole rat, they can move their incisors independently of each other, just like a pair of chopsticks. Again, imagine being able to move your two front teeth individually and separately. And if those weird facts weren't enough, there's still one more. You might not believe it, but apparently they can barely feel pain. These critters are some of the toughest around, and they don't even react to being burned with acid. Could you imagine that kind of set of abilities? It seems almost superhuman. Which of the naked mole rat's talents would you most like to have? Let me know in the comments below. While you're down there, don't forget to subscribe and give the video a thumbs up if you're enjoying it. Number 7. Vengeful Crows Crows have been harbingers of darkness for a very long time. There is nothing spookier than hearing a crow call in the dark of night while you're walking alone. And while ravens may be larger and more ominous than crows, crows have a very strange habit of seeking revenge on those who have done them wrong making them far more terrifying than any other bird. This all has to do with the crow's exceptional memory. Crows can recognize a human face. That's right, it doesn't just know that you're a person, but it knows your face and who you are, and it probably even knows where you live. That's more than any government intelligence agency can say, and crows are significantly more likely to hold a grudge. They don't forgive or forget. If you have ever been rude to a crow perhaps, by throwing a rock at it or trying to kick it, the crow is going to remember you. The downside for you is that crows can communicate with other crows, 
and if the crow recognises your face and perceives you as a threat, it will let the other crows know. It might even get other crows involved to heckle you in an attempt to make you leave the area. This could result in you basically being harassed by a murder of crows. Why do you think a group of crows is called a murder? Well, it's not for being nice and friendly, that's for sure. Number 6. Rock Eating Crocs Crocodiles like to eat rocks. Yes, it's a pretty strange habit. Rocks don't have any nutritional value, and they certainly don't get digested very easily. I certainly wouldn't eat any, and I hope you wouldn't either. There are not too many animals that would go out of their way to actually eat rocks, but while this is a strange behaviour for this prehistoric lizard, crocodiles don't eat rocks for the taste. They eat rocks because the stones help them with their basic digestion, according to research. By eating rocks, the crocodile will help crush and grate its food already in its stomach. Human stomachs don't work the same way, so don't try this at home. However, this strategy is especially good for crocodiles who eat very large meals, or animals with tough bones and shells, like turtles. The rocks help break everything down within the croc's stomach, so it can be easily digested. Plus, having rocks in the crocodile's stomach will make it feel full. At least that part makes sense. With a bunch of rocks clunking around in there, it's going to be a full belly no matter how much actual food makes it through. Though I would be worried about not getting enough nutrients if I were the crocodile. Number 5. Chickens and the T-Rex There are some unlikely cousins, but family is family. This one is a little less of a strange habit and more of a strange relationship. When you think about the infamous Tyrannosaurus Rex, who do you think its closest relative is? Is it the elephant? Is it the crocodile or the Komodo dragon? Perhaps a shark or an iguana? According to researchers who study genetics and evolution, the chemical structure found in proteins preserved inside the Tyrannosaurus Rex bone most closely resembles the chemical structure of a chicken. Basically, dinosaur DNA equals chicken DNA. The closest relative to a T-Rex is a modern day chicken. When you eat scrambled eggs for breakfast in the morning, you are eating the closest living thing we currently have to real life dinosaur eggs. This strengthens the long held theory the dinosaurs are the ancestors of birds, and that through the past 70 million years the ferocious Tyrannosaurus Rex has slowly evolved, and some of its descendants eventually did turn into the clueless clucker, the hungry and slightly obnoxious modern day chicken. And yes, this is based on real scientific studies published in real scientific journals. And yes, the actual science is a bit more complicated than a slow evolution, as different environmental conditions changed the world around the dinosaurs, some of their descendants gradually got smaller and smaller, gained feathers over scales, and started clucking instead of roaring. Now that's a family reunion I couldn't imagine going well, could you? Number 4. Vampire Butterflies There is nothing more peaceful than watching beautiful butterflies fluttering around the garden in the springtime. Butterflies are the very epitome of purity and kindness. Or are they? If you have never ventured into the darkest depths of the jungle, you have probably never seen the dark side of butterflies. While these vividly colourful insects are certainly appealing to look at, they are actually wild insects just like the rest of them. Some species of these fantastic creatures are also vampires. That's right, butterflies, like mosquitoes, will drink other animals' blood and not think twice about it. Of course, butterflies can't actually cut you open to drink your blood, but because of their nutrient needs, butterflies are greedy to suck up moisture anywhere they can get it. This includes the blood from your wound and the tears from your eyes. You may have never thought of it before, but your blood contains loads of minerals and nutrients that almost any living organism would be happy to eat. Butterflies are one of these organisms. Not only will they drink your blood, which is full of proteins, but they will even attempt to consume nutrients from feces. Disgusting, but there are nutrients everywhere, and animals who want to get at them. Number 3. Blind Platypuses Of course, you knew there was going to be some discussion of the weirdest animal wandering around today. And of course, it's the platypus. Platypuses are unquestionably strange animals. They are mammals, but they lay eggs. They look like beavers, but they're not, and they swim through the water like happy otters. Pictures of platypuses on the internet often make them look much bigger than they are, but in reality, platypuses are only about the size of a house cat. They have dark brown fur, they are mostly waterproof, and they swim through the water with their eyes closed. You would think the platypus would keep its eyes open while swimming through the water so it could see where it was going, but it doesn't. It has a strange habit of submerging itself in water and then closing its eyes and ears while it swims around hunting. It actually uses its bill to hunt, since its bill has electroreceptors that can pick up small electrical signals sent by edible animals as they move around underwater. This allows the platypus to find worms and shrimps and eat them even while it swims around with its eyes squeezed shut. If the tail of the blind platypus feeling its way towards dinner doesn't make any sense to you, you're not alone. I thought this was baffling, but now I want a duck-billed platypus as a pet. Would you want one? Let me know in the comments section below. Number 2. The Assassin Bug The Assassin Bug is the coolest bug you have never heard of. With a name like that, it has to be doing something unique. This bug is half assassin, half mercenary, and 100% menacing. 
Not only does the assassin bug kill and eat its prey, but it stacks their corpses on its back and walks around with dozens of dead bugs stacked on its shoulders like some kind of gruesome trophy. Like an alien in a horror movie, first it impales its prey, then it eats them from the inside out, and lastly it attaches the hollowed corpses to its back. And while you would think even the notorious assassin bug would only need to carry a few corpses on its back to make its point, it actually piles an outstanding number of dead victims onto its back to scare away possible predators. There is no better armour than your own victims strapped to your body, and no better deterrent for potential enemies. This also serves as a sort of camouflage for the assassin bug. The assassin bug typically eats termites, ants, bees, and anything else it can sink its fangs into. But the weird behaviour of wearing its victims earns it the top place as one of the strangest and most rugged creatures on planet Earth. What do you think? Is this trophy hunter the toughest, most terrifying creature for its size? I think so, but leave a comment and let me know your opinion. Number 1. The Tongue Thief The Cymothoa exigua is a parasite that literally steals tongues. Not only does this parasite steal tongues, but it actually eats tongues and replaces them as itself. Does that sound unbelievable? The details are even stranger. Basically, this parasite will target a fish, infiltrate its gills, latch onto its tongue, consume the tongue, and then replace the fish's tongue with itself. This absolutely bizarre exchange goes on without the fish becoming aware of its victimhood, and it ends up leaving the fish with a fully functioning tongue. The parasite acts as the fish's tongue to grind food just like a normal tongue would. This is the only example of a species in the animal kingdom replacing the function of an organ. Think of it like if a parasite crawled into your body, ate your lungs, and then started to breathe air for you. It's absolutely bizarre. According to marine biologist Rick Brusker, the only fish that gets its tongue completely devoured and replaced as an organ that operates 100% is the rose snapper. The parasite does not steal other fish's tongues, draining their blood and replacing them, but the rose snapper gets the worst of it. I don't know whether to be more disgusted or impressed. Number 12. Giant Long-Legged Katydid the giant's long-legged katydid, or just the giant katydid for short, is one of the strangest bugs ever. It is the largest species of katydid in the entire world, and kind of looks like an enormous, completely green grasshopper. In fact, they are closely related to grasshoppers, so that explains their similarities. However, the giant katydid has super long antenna, and their wings look like leaves. This makes them stand out against the typical brown grasshopper, which has short antenna and wings folded over its back. You can find the giant katydid doing nothing in the daytime, as through most of the daylight hours they remain completely motionless, using their camouflage to avoid predators. They live in the forested mountain ranges of tropical Malaysia, and are basically invisible amongst the canopies of green leaves. At night though, the giant katydid uses its super long antenna to find leaves and small insects to eat, and to try and find a mate. You can hear the males at night making high-pitched noises as they try to signal a female. Number 11. Thorn bug. The thorn bug literally looks like a thorn. It looks like the spike from a rose bush or the spine of a thistle plant. It doesn't even look like this strange bug has a face or legs. It straight up just looks like a thorn, but it's pretty good camouflage, as thorn bugs are super tricky for birds or larger bugs to eat. Nobody wants to bite down on a nail, and that's what trying to eat a thorn bug would be like. There are a lot of different types of thorn bugs, but they all share the same features. They all have a giant thorn thing on their back. They are also widely distributed throughout the entire world, living on every continent except for Antarctica. What's really strange is when you see an entire group of thorn bugs covering a branch. They make the branch look like it's growing dozens and dozens of spikes, and this helps the entire group to remain safe from predators. It also stops birds from landing on the branch, as it appears that the branch is riddled with spikes. Number 10. Hercules Beetle The Hercules Beetle doesn't even look like it belongs on this planet. According to the Biology Dictionary, this enormous insect is one of the largest beetles in the world. It's easily recognised by its long pincers and massive body. The Hercules beetle is a type of rhinoceros beetle, all of which are armoured monsters known for their brute strength. But while most rhinoceros beetles can only lift around 30 times their own body mass, the Hercules beetle can carry an outstanding 850 times its own mass. Crunch those numbers and the Hercules beetle becomes the strongest living thing on the planet. Imagine if you weighed 150 pounds and could carry 127 500 pounds on your back. Do you understand why it's called the Hercules Beetle now? Putting their ridiculous strength aside, Hercules Beetles are also famous for the way they fight. They use their massive pincers to battle each other to try and claim a female. 
Because male Hercules beetles are attracted both chemically and audibly to females, a single lady beetle will often draw a whole herd of male Hercules beetles, who will then battle each other for the right to breed. Whoever said the animal kingdom isn't romantic? Number 9. Devil's Flower Mantis The Devil's Flower Mantis is one of the most legendary species of mantis. It has an amazing colour scheme that makes it look like a dried out leaf when it's young, but then brightens into shades of green and white once in adulthood. This mantis is also ridiculously huge. I mean, it's not the size of a dog or anything, but it's pretty sizeable when you look at other types of mantis. This particular species lives in Africa and mostly in Tanzania. There is no denying these are some of the creepiest and strangest insects in the world. Each one has a big shield on its back, four long and skinny legs, and the two long arms that makes the mantis so infamous for their kung fu skills. But other than the way it looks, there isn't really that much extraordinary about the Devil's Flower Mantis. They are extremely expensive, and they are one of the most favourite exotic insect pets. They are difficult to breed, they can grow to be around 10 centimetres tall, and unless you already knew it was there, you'd never find it in the wild. Have you ever seen a praying mantis in person? Have you ever held one? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell for more amazing animal videos, and let me know what you'd like to see in future videos. Number 8. Panda Ant Who doesn't want to hug a panda bear? They are black, white and cuddly all over. But what about the panda ant? It's furry too, right? But this little critter is actually a wasp, and you shouldn't touch a wasp, probably ever if you can help it. While the male panda ant has wings and looks a lot more like our notion of a wasp, the female does not have wings, looks just like a little itty bitty furry panda, and has a nasty stinger that can send you skipping away in horrible agony. Its other nickname is Cow Killer, but its sting isn't the deadliest or the most painful, which just goes to show how extreme they can be. Native to South America, they are parasitic and belong to a family of wasps known as Multilidae. There are around 7,000 of them whose females resemble large, furry ants. Also known as Velvet Ants, they can be found in all kinds of colours, and while they are pretty and very interesting, you should stay clear from this creepy, deceiving wasp. Number 7. Giant Water Bug the giant water bug is creepy, strange, ugly, and absolutely fascinating. The North American species of giant water bug can grow to be around 2.5 inches in length. However, South American giant water bugs can grow to be a full 4 inches in length. Everything in the jungle is always bigger, but what makes the giant water bug so strange is the way it carries its eggs. They typically live just below the surface of lakes and ponds, where they are known to nibble on the toes of unsuspecting swimmers. But if you were to look down and see the giant water bug with all of the eggs growing out of its back, you would be absolutely disgusted. Or fascinated. I suppose it depends who you are. You see, the female water bug will deposit her eggs on the back of her mate. The male water bug will then care for the eggs for a full two weeks while they come to term on its back. During those two weeks, the male water bug must protect the eggs from predators and keep them healthy. Basically, the female dumps the babies with the father and then runs away and leaves him to do all the work. Number 6. Australian Walking Stick The Australian Walking Stick actually looks a lot like the Devil's Flower Mantis, but in a way, it's even stranger. For those who don't know, walking sticks are all native to Australia. They are all herbivores, and they all look super similar to praying mantises. However, they are not even a little bit related. According to the Oregon Zoo, the biggest difference is that mantises are carnivores and will eat other insects, and walking sticks are herbivores and will only eat leaves. The Australian walking stick lives in eucalyptus trees and eats their leaves. They are indistinguishable from sticks, which is obviously where they get their name. And males are able to fly, but females are not. Females still have wings, but their wings don't actually work. You might say they got a pretty bum deal. An interesting fact is that females can lay up to 200 eggs over a period of just a few months. But this is an important ability considering the lifespan of an Australian walking stick is only between 10 and 12 months. Number 5. Kalita Silk Moth Caterpillar The Kalita Silk Moth Caterpillar is native to the southwest of the United States, where it feeds almost entirely on purple sage. They operate pretty much the same as any other caterpillar, and that in itself is enough to earn them a place on the list of strangest bugs. When they are born, they are tiny little black insects, just a few millimetres long and completely black. However, as they grow, they begin to change colour. The silk moth caterpillar will first turn yellow and eventually become a very dark green as they get fatter and fatter in preparation for doing what caterpillars do best, metamorphosis. These particular caterpillars will begin to make a silk cocoon amidst the leaves that it enjoys eating. 
After hanging out in the cocoon for a little while, the Kalita Silk Moth caterpillar is no longer a caterpillar, but a beautiful black and green silk moth with fantastic colours and patterns and a pair of impressive wings. The whole transformation from tiny black caterpillar to a fat green caterpillar and finally to a huge silk moth is strange and captivating in its complexity. Number 4. Giant Weta The Giant Weta is arguably the worst bug on the planet. It's definitely earned itself the title of the ugliest. According to Science Magazine, New Zealand has more than 80 different species of wetter insects, but the giant wetter is the biggest and the ugliest. In fact, wetter in the indigenous language of the Maori means god of ugly things, so you can imagine how terrible this pesky bug really is. The story of the giant wetter goes back 65 million years. After the extinction of the dinosaurs, small furry creatures began to explode all over the planet. However, because New Zealand had split away from other land masses 15 million years before the extinction, they ended up without any mammals except for a single bat. This caused biodiversity to take an entirely different form. Without mammalian predators, flightless birds and insects were able to expand dramatically. This is how the giant wetter came to be such a dominant creature on the island. There are 11 species of giant wetter in New Zealand. Basically, instead of rats, cats and other predatory animals, these gross insects just kept getting bigger and bigger without anything to challenge them. Number 3. Leafhopper The leafhopper is definitely one unique insect. You can find leafhoppers hanging out on all kinds of different plants. They are an invasive species that inadvertently destroys plant life by sucking sap out of the plants they live on, destroying chlorophyll, transmitting diseases and eventually curling leaves. Whichever plant the leafhopper decides to live on inevitably takes on quite a bit of damage. Though not from a single leafhopper, it takes a whole gang of them to make a plant wither. There are a few different types of leafhoppers, and they are all specific to what kind of plants they hang out on. For example, the apple leafhopper does some serious damage to apple foliage by making it pale and speckled with white spots. Then there is the beet leafhopper, which is a carrier of a viral disease that curls sugar beet leaves and stunts the growth of the plant. Also, a beet leafhopper is able to infect tomato, cucumber, spinach and other types of garden variety plants. Basically, for every plant there is a leafhopper, and each leafhopper is evolved to destroy its particular plant. According to Britannica, the grape leafhopper eats developing leaves on grapevines in Virginia creepers, while the potato leafhopper causes potato leaves to turn brown and curl. Number 2. Filbert Weevil Weevils are pretty freaky bugs. The immediate thing that stands out with a filbert weevil is its super long snout, properly referred to as a rostrum. Weevils are part of the largest beetle family in the world, with over 45,000 different living species. That means that weevils are the biggest and most widely spread family in the animal kingdom. Most weevils just look like generic insects, but the one thing they all have in common is their weird eyeballs. Each kind of weevil has a shiny pair of dark black eyes that are unmistakable. No matter how different their bodies are built, or how differently coloured they are, they all have the same black eyes. But perhaps the strangest weevil of all is the filbert weevil, which is a pest of oak trees. There is nothing overly special about the filbert weevil, other than its super long nose. It does basically the same thing other weevils do, which is damage plants that humans like. Aside from the filbert weevil, the most famous weevil is named the boll weevil, and it absolutely loves ruining cotton crops. Number 1. Bullet Ant Known as the world's most painful insect, getting bitten by a bullet ant is something you never want to experience. Native to the rainforests of Central and South America, the small but powerful bullet ant is also known as the Homiga 24, meaning the 24-hour ant, which refers to the full day of pain that follows after being stung. Only a little over an inch in length, it is hard to believe that their sting can feel like getting shot with a bullet. Why is this necessary? Why does the ant cause so much pain? Dr. Justin Schmidt, an entomologist and research director of the Southwest Biological Institute in Tuscan, Arizona, invented the Schmidt Sting Pain Index, which categorizes the level of pain felt when stung by wasps, bees, and ants. He let himself get stung by all kinds of insects in order to rate their sting. He said that it really felt like getting hit by a bullet with waves of burning pain that were absolutely excruciating and went on for hours. The good thing is that it is a localised effect, and this sting does not directly affect your heart or lungs, so you won't die from it, but it will hurt like a biatch. These ants are greatly feared across the rainforest by people and animals alike. However, there are several indigenous tribes that use these ants in their initiation rituals. 
Young boys wishing to be seen as men by the tribes must endure placing their hand in a woven glove filled with these ants. They must endure getting stung repeatedly for at least 10 minutes. If that wasn't enough, the boy must sometimes go through over a dozen of these rituals. None of them suffer long-term effects, although the trauma may last forever. Number 8. Chinese Crocodile Lizard There are only about a thousand Chinese crocodile lizards left in the world today, and that's a shame, because they're remarkable creatures. First off, this thing is a dead ringer for Godzilla, but they named it the Crocodile Lizard because its tail bears two long rows of scales, making it look like its tail should belong to a crocodile. But they're nowhere near as big. They make it to around 18 inches long. You can only find them in a couple of parts of China and Vietnam. These guys are really good at swimming. Their living situation reflects that. They set up house on top of branches that extend over rivers, giving them the ability to jump in at a moment's notice if they start to feel threatened. They're more likely to do that than to get into a fight. However, if they are caught, they will enter a violent struggle, defecating, whistling, and biting to free themselves from their predator. They've been perfecting their lifestyle for over a hundred million years. They're the only surviving member of both their family and genus, which extends back to long before the dinosaurs left the earth. They often enter a metabolic state, remain motionless, and don't respond to any stimulus for several hours to conserve their heat energy, especially when the temperature drops. Because of this unique behavior, this reptile is known as the Great Sleepy Lizard, which has led to the belief that the Chinese crocodile lizards can cure insomnia. Sadly, even though they've been around for so long, we don't know a lot about them. That's probably because there's so few of them left, and over the past 40 years, they've become even less numerous. Their habitats are slowly but surely being destroyed, and the ones that remain are traded as pets because they're worth a lot of money. Number 7. Mary River Turtle the Mary River turtle has been heavily traded, which led to its declining numbers, but some have a quite distinctive appearance. No, that's not a teenager going through a punk phase, but this turtle does have a straight up green mohawk growing atop its head. There are even a few sprouts of green growing out from its face. That's not the turtle's hair, but rather algae growing all over its head. It's kind of like a turtle wig, which earns it a spot on this list. Even though they have mouths, that's not what they're breathing from. Instead, they use an eccentric method of respiration. They breathe through the air in their butts. That's right, they breathe through their butts. More specifically, they breathe through their cloaca, which is an organ located in their behind that operates as their go-to for most of their bathroom and reproductive duties. This breathing mechanism is what enables them to stay in the water for up to three days. It's like some weird superpower being able to breathe underwater, but only with your butt. That's very weird. Although it was only studied in a scientific setting in 1994, it had been traded as a pet for 20 years prior. It's also incredibly unique. It's the sole member of its genus, and it's been around for approximately 40 million years. They aren't capable of reproduction until they're 25 years old. Sadly, their numbers are declining because of pet trading practices as well as the construction of dams. Luckily, wildlife conservationists are keeping an eye out on this turtle, so there is some hope. Would you like to look like this turtle? Let me know in the comments below it. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Number 6. The Chinese Alligator The Chinese alligator is the only alligator that lives outside of the American continent. Of course, we all know about the American alligators, but you might be surprised to realize that there's a Chinese variant as well, and they've been around for quite a while. Some people even think that the Chinese alligator is part of what inspired the development of the mythical Chinese dragon, which permeates Chinese culture to this day. These alligators are typically smaller than their American counterparts, and they're nowhere near as obvious as them either, as they live in a network underground, which enables them to thrive in areas with water, even those near urban spots. This gator split from its American alligator cousin about 40 million years ago when each of them diverged from the rest of the animal kingdom after the dinosaurs went extinct. There are only a mere 100 members of this species still living in the world. Almost all of their habitats have been taken over, giving them very few places in the world to live. 
for a long time. They were also hunted, but that has recently stopped. Thankfully, there are efforts in place to keep this alligator on the planet. Their habitats are being revitalized and breeding is currently taking place, so they might restore to greater numbers yet. Number 5. Psychedelic Rock Gecko Scientists think that there are only about 500 psychedelic rock geckos left in the world, and that's quite a shame, because these creatures are some of the most dazzling reptiles on the planet. As their name would indicate, psychedelic rock geckos are brightly colored and speckled with fascinating features. For instance, all of its limbs are colored with a loud orange. This could make one think that this little reptile is wearing orange boots, and its purple body and yellow-green head are also pretty magnificent. It looks more like it belongs on a psychedelic album cover than in the wild, and in fact, there are only two places in the world where you can find this gecko, on the Hong Kanai Island in South Vietnam and the Hong Tuan Island. Their habitats are 5 square miles and 984 square feet, respectively, and that's the total amount of space in which they live. Even though they were only discovered in 2010, they've been widely trafficked for their distinctive features. This has brought their population down to a mere 500, and they haven't been investigated all that much, but captive breeding efforts are in place. We do know that both the males and females exhibit this bright coloration scheme, as well as the youth of the species. They like to hang out in the sun rather than remain deep inside of rocks like other lizards. We can only hope that these lizards continue to populate the world because they undoubtedly make it a more interesting place. And now for number four. But first, do you think this reptile with its orange boots is adorable? Let me know in the comments below. Number four, Madagascar Blind Snake. The Madagascar Blind Snake is one strange snake. Throughout its evolution, it stopped being able to see through its eyes. Like other blind snakes, its eyes are actually located beneath the scales on its head. They're also incredibly tiny. They're approximately the size of your average earthworm. Not only that, but they also have pink skin. Strange to think that this is a snake at all, but they're out there. However, in terms of population size, they're not doing that well. We've seen so few of them that their population size is unknown. We only saw them in 1905 and then it took another 100 years to find them again. To add to that, it's the only species in both its genus and its broader family, making this one truly unique snake. Based on the fossil record, scientists think that it went off on its own path around the time of the dinosaurs wiped out. Blind snakes, including those of the Madagascar variety, are all burrowing creatures. They live either inside of wood or underground. The Madagascar blind snake feeds on termites and ants with a specialized eating apparatus. However, due to deforestation and grazing, their forest habitats are shrinking yearly. Researchers think that they live exclusively in an area that's about 10 square kilometers. Number 3. Armadillo Lizard The armadillo lizard is considered one of the rarest reptiles not only in terms of its population, but also for its behavior and attributes. The armadillo lizard is aptly named for its armor-like exterior, which is very similar to that of an armadillo. If you look, you can see just how sharp and pointy these pieces of armor must be. Besides, whatever they're feeling threatened, they curl up just like an armadillo, because their underbellies are not guarded by the same armor. However, when these lizards curl up, they display a much more interesting look than other animals that exhibit similar behavior. Because of their slender frames, when they curl themselves up, they look like the mythical symbol of the Ouroboros, the snake eating its tail. That's what gives them their Latin name, Ouroboros cataphractus expialidocious. This defensive mechanism is pretty effective because every part of their body gets protected. This species is one of the few lizards that doesn't lay eggs. Even the female can feed her young, which is also very unusual for a lizard. They eat termites mostly, just like armadillos but this is also their downfall. Since they rely so heavily on termite populations, when those populations are affected, so are armadillo lizards. Since they're so distinctive, humans often tried to capture them for trade. Once this was tempered down, however, the populations got back up to speed. If you ever meet this species, keep an eye out. It's quite likely that you'll come across 60 of your fellow lizards. Number two, Madagascar big-headed turtle. Madagascar's big-headed turtle 
is currently considered to be the most endangered reptile alive today on Earth. Its name pretty much tells you all you need to know about it. It hails from Madagascar, which is a hub of biological diversity because of its long separation from mainland wildlife. And also, as its name makes clear, it has a really big head when compared to its body. These turtles eat mollusks and the remains of dead fauna. These turtles are as old as heck too. In fact, you might call them downright prehistoric. Their species extends back around 80 million years, which means that they were there when the dinosaurs roamed the earth. So this species represents a long line. It's sad to think that they might not be around for much longer. Imagine the stories we'd hear if they could tell us what the world was like back then. Over the 20th century, these big-headed turtles rapidly declined in their population numbers. People would often eat them, and their habitats are under severe stress due to deforestation and deterioration. These turtles tend to live in places that aren't guarded by conservation efforts. However, in recent years, people have started to try to breed them in captivity, and they've been closely watched. So hopefully, we can get this endangered species back off the ground soon. Number 1. Lonesome George in terms of rarity, one turtle stood above all the other reptiles on this list. Lonesome George George was a Pinta Island tortoise, which was a heavily endangered species of tortoise. In fact, George was such a rarity that he was considered to be the last member of his entire species. Not only does that make him one of a kind, but he was the single rarest animal in the world for the last years of his life. Alas, Lonesome George died on June 24, 2012. For a great chunk of his life, he lived at the Tortoise Breeding and Rearing Center located in Puerto Aura, Santa Cruz Island, inside of the Galapagos National Park. He was an old man who lived a long, full life. Officials think that he made it to nearly 102 years old. So when they entered his corral and found him lifeless, they were distraught. His death represented the end of the entire species. In the 1800s, Pinta Island tortoises were killed in large number because of Pinta Island's location as an entrance and exit point from the Galapagos Islands. There's one ray of hope, however. Researchers from Yale University recently discovered 17 hybrids from the species, which means that their Pinta Island parents might still be alive. We can't know for sure, but it would be a big win for conservationism if we were to be able to discover some more lonesome Georges. Number 10. Shoebill Stork The shoebill stork is undoubtedly the rarest and strangest of all the birds. For one thing, it's huge. It's probably taller than your mailbox, boasting an impressive 8 foot wingspan and standing over 4.5 feet tall. This enormous prehistoric bird has a massive bill it uses for eating fish. In fact, the shoebill stork is also known as the whale headed stork because of its bizarre size. But they are not actually storks. They have their own classification because they are so unique. They use their bills for eating of course, but also to make all kinds of loud clacking noises. This almost could have been a pelican, but at some point in its evolution it took a different path. Surprisingly, the shoebill stork can live to be around 35 years old. Seems quite a long time for such a big bird, right? But you are very unlikely to ever see one in the wild. The bird is classified as vulnerable by the International Union for Conservation of Nature, According to them, there are only 3 to 5 thousand shoebills left in their native wetlands of Central and East Africa. The population is in a steep decline due to habitat loss and disturbance by humans, not to mention the illegal bird trade. What do you think of this giant bird? Is it cool? Ugly? Intimidating? Let me know in the comments below. Number 9. Amur Leopard Most people think leopards live specifically in Africa, but this is not true. The Amur Leopard makes its home in the east of Russia. It has adapted to living in the temperate forests and now thrives in the cold regions of the Far East. Just like other leopards, this one can run at astounding speeds, reaching up to 37 miles per hour. It has also been reported to leap up to 10 feet vertically and up to 19 feet horizontally, making it one of the best jumpers in the world. Unlike other animals, the male Amur leopards have been known to stay with their female mates even after breeding. Some even help with raising the young cubs. In the wild, these leopards can live anywhere between 10 and 15 years, but in captivity they can live over 20 years. Other names for the Amur leopard include the Far East leopard, the Korean leopard, and the Manchurian leopard. 
Unfortunately, this is another rare animal that is hardly seen anywhere on Earth. The World Wildlife Foundation has marked them as critically endangered, with a measly population of just around 80. This spectacular leopard could be erased off the face of the Earth sooner rather than later. Number 8. Hainan Black Crested Gibbon It's difficult to see monkeys in the forest. It's even more difficult to spot primates in the wild. But if you want an even greater challenge, just try and find a Hainan Black Crested Gibbon. This is the world's rarest primate, only weeks, months or even a year away from being extinct. Out of all of the 504 primate species, this one is the rarest and most vulnerable. You can only find this gibbon at the southern tip of China, living on a tropical island confined to a tiny patch of forest. In this little area they call home, there are about 25 gibbons left. That is not a lot. In fact, even the other 19 recognised species of gibbons, which live scattered throughout Southeast Asia, are either endangered or critically endangered, with the exception of only one. Not only is the Hainan black crested gibbon at the edge of oblivion as the rarest primate, but it's also one of the rarest mammals of all time. You remember that tiny patch of forest they live in? Well, it's less than two square miles. Imagine if there were only 25 people left on Earth and they all lived in the same apartment complex. That's exactly what this is like. Unless you manage to book a trip to this island, you will never behold one of these incredible primates with your own two eyes. Number 7. Black Eyed Leaf Frog Primates and big cats are not the only animals that are elusive and extremely rare. The black eyed leaf frog is a tiny amphibian that you are very unlikely to run into at any point in time. However, its situation is not as dire as it used to be. This little frog lives in Latin America, from Mexico all the way through Central America. And while it was on the red list of critically endangered species just 10 years ago, it has since been removed from any such list. It's now not anywhere close to being extinct. According to the International Union for Conservation of Nature, Researchers have found this leaf frog thriving in a bunch of new locations and multiplying in extremely high numbers. It seems that this little frog is rebounding back from the brink of no return, and you can now find them hanging out in lots of different areas of the jungle, primarily in Guatemala. Still, that doesn't mean you're going to see one of these elusive frogs on your next jungle outing. They are so small and so green that it's unlikely you would see one if it were right in front of you sitting on a leaf. What separates these frogs from others is their huge black eyes that look like pure black marbles. Number 6. Greater Bamboo Lemur The Greater Bamboo Lemur is the biggest of all the bamboo lemurs. It was first discovered in 1870 and was believed to have gone extinct even before the beginning of the 20th century. However, the Greater Bamboo Lemur was discovered a second time in 1972. It came back from the void of no return. This is one of the only mammals in the world that primarily eats bamboo. The lemur is totally dependent on its bamboo food source, and so it lives a pretty lazy life, spending almost all of its time nibbling away in the forest. The biggest problem is that as such a specialised animal, the greater bamboo lemur can't just change its habitat. It's an extremely basic animal that has evolved over 60 million years to live on the island of Madagascar eating nothing but bamboo. As you can imagine, as the forests of Madagascar are quickly cleared, as illegal logging and mining cuts down the bamboo and burns down the forest, the greater bamboo lemur is forced deeper and deeper into seclusion. This is not a very populous animal. You definitely won't find it roaming freely from branch to branch. But they're not gone yet. Number 5. Piker one look at the piker, and you know without a doubt it was the inspiration for the famous Pokemon mascot, Pikachu. Give this little mammal a yellow paint job and I guarantee it could shoot lightning out of its butt. But there is no other creature quite like it. The piker lives in the mountains of Western North America and all throughout Asia. And even though they look like rats or mice, pikers are not rodents. They are the smallest types of lagomorphs. The only other animals inside the lagomorph family are hares and rabbits. That means the pika is the smallest and strangest rabbit on earth. It kind of looks like a furry egg. And guess what? There are 29 different species of pika. They have long fur, they are super soft, and they also have very furry feet. But unlike rabbits and hares, they don't have long forelimbs for jumping. The reason you will never see a pika is because they are so tiny. A typical pika only weighs about 7 ounces and is only about 6 inches in length. They also live very secluded lives, making their nests inside the nooks and crannies of rock piles. They construct burrows and spend most of their time hanging out in deep underground labyrinths. Number 4. Darwin's Fox Darwin's finches are probably his most famous animal. However, there was another creature that helped Charles Darwin develop his incredible theory of evolution, and it's now referred to as Darwin's Fox. The story comes from December in 1832. 
Charles Darwin was only one year into his famous research expedition aboard the HMS Beagle. He was in the middle of scrambling up an embankment on the coast of a small Chilean island when he discovered a little grey fox watching him. The fox was much different than their relatives on the mainland of Chile. This one was also the first that he had ever seen. Darwin caught the animal, created a scientific record of it and decided it was a new species in 1837. Its proper name is Lycalopex fulvipes, but it is better known as Darwin's fox. Fast forward 200 years and we still hardly know anything about this fox. It is extremely rare. Recent scientific discoveries revealed that Darwin's fox also inhabits a few forested regions on the mainland of Chile. However, the International Union for Conservation of Nature has classified the species as endangered, claiming that there are fewer than 1,000 of them left in the world. What makes their story of potential extinction slightly different than the usual is that their main threat comes from dogs. Domestic dogs often hunt and kill the smaller foxes, and so they are having a difficult time keeping their numbers up, which is a real shame, as this is one of the most adorable and most unique foxes you will never see. Number 3. Peruvian Black Spider Monkey The Peruvian Black Spider Monkey makes its home in the Amazon forest of Brazil, Bolivia and Peru. And while many monkeys are having a difficult time with the destruction of their habitat, the Peruvian spider monkey is having a worse time than the rest. It's been endangered since 2014 and is heavily trafficked as an illegal pet. This is hardly surprising considering how unique and adorable, or ugly, depending on who you are, the monkey is. They typically live in groups of about 35 monkeys, but it's almost impossible to find a gathering that large in the jungle anymore, seeing as there are not many of them left. What we do know is that the Peruvian black spider monkey enjoys eating fresh fruit, and so the best time to try and spot one is in the fruiting season in the Amazon basin, particularly on the Peruvian side. Number 2. Black-footed ferret Ferrets are cool, there's no getting around it. We all knew somebody as a teenager who had some ferrets running around their house instead of cats. These animals are slippery, super fast, and they absolutely stink when you have one in your home. And while the ferrets you typically see in weird people's houses are plentiful, the black-footed ferret is actually endangered. According to the WWF, there are only around 370 of this type of ferret left in the world. In fact, they were once believed to be completely extinct, but the black-footed ferret is now making a comeback. Throughout the last 30 years, efforts from state and federal agencies, Native American tribes, conservation organizations and zoos have given the black-footed ferret another chance to survive. Recovery efforts have helped boost their population to what it is today, still less than 400, but a lot better than zero. For this reason alone, I highly recommend helping this ferret to recover. If you have the chance, adopt a dozen of them and breed a hundred of them. Number 1. Pangolin I don't care what anyone says, there is nothing on this planet more adorable than a baby pangolin. And yeah, even adult pangolins are pretty cute. However, just like the rest of the animals on this list, they are plummeting into extinction. Pangolins are actually mammals with scales that in theory are supposed to protect them. Like anteaters, they eat ants and termites with their long sticky tongue which can even be longer than the animal's body. They also hold the title as the most trafficked animal in the world and are treasured among illegal wildlife traders for their scales. What makes this absolutely infuriating is that pangolin scales are pulverized for use in mythical medicines that hold absolutely no value anywhere in the scientific world. Basically, poachers steal the pangolins so they can turn their scales into witch medicine for crazy people. Sorry to say it, but it's true. We need to stick up for these animals. The World Wildlife Fund says that based on reported seizures between 2011 and 2013, an estimated 116,000 to 234,000 pangolins were killed. Seizures represent as little as 10% of the actual volume of pangolins in illegal wildlife trade. But the bizarre story here is how the pangolin is related to the coronavirus outbreak. A lot of people have been talking about bat soup but the truth is that the coronavirus outbreak could have been transmitted from bats to humans via pangolins. This isn't verified science, and the study isn't even published, but some scientists, according to Fauna and Flora International, the world's oldest conservation charity, are claiming that the pangolin is the most likely intermediate host of the coronavirus. As of now, this is still not proven, it's just a theory. The good news is that in June of this year, China increased protection for the native Chinese pangolin, Manis pentadactyla, to the highest level, so the species can no longer be eaten even in the country itself, and the government will no longer allow the use of pangolin scales in traditional medicine. It's probably because they could be a threat to global health and carry diseases that can possibly be transmitted to humans too. Hopefully it's not too late.
Number 10. Melville Range, Australia Two hours from Cairns, in the northern part of Australia, lies a dark mountain of boulders that rises up from the rainforest. Known as Cape Melville, the isolated range is barely visited by biologists and until recently, explorers didn't know what treasures could be found there. A peninsula dominated by the Melville Range, Cape Melville rises from plains of dry forests and is bounded on both sides by the sea. 120 miles south lies a rainforest with an incredible geology that has been unheard of until 1978 when a local Aboriginal man told botanists about it. Describing an unusual palm he found there, the man's discovery, the foxtail palm, later ended up being in high demand for its unique and unusual features that are found only on the boulder fields of Cape Melville. Today, the plant is common along esplanades from Cairns to Florida. Also found only in Cape Melville is another plant known as Cape Melville Nightshade, as well as three invertebrates, including a snake-eyed skink, a tree frog and a boulder frog that were all discovered there in the late 1990s. In 2013, a group of scientists and researchers were sent along with National Geographic film crew into Cape Melville Mountains to explore, and there they discovered a lost world teeming with undiscovered flora and fauna. The Nine Mile Range is practically impossible to reach due to its massive granite boulders that shield it from incoming vehicles. Scientists originally believed that there wasn't much to explore there until they used satellite imagery to detect a small rainforest near a large rock outcropping. The crew took a few days to reach the isolated rainforest, and by the time they got there, three different invertebrate species had been discovered, with one being estimated at least one million years old. A leaf-tailed gecko that only measures about three inches in length with comically large eyes and long legs was one of the species found there. Its distinctive skin pattern helps to camouflage it. Another lizard species discovered by the team, the skink, is a slender golden scaled creature that scurries and leaps from boulders. Maybe it's the remote location or the car and house sized chunks of granite that protect the area that has allowed these previously undiscovered species to survive and thrive there. Whatever the case, it's exciting to realise that there are still undiscovered places holding many secrets to Earth's past. Number 9. Sima Humboldt, Venezuela In Venezuela, in the Bolivar state, there is an expansive land with a carpet, a beautiful green forest with very deep holes that have other hidden forests at their very bottom. Discovered in 1961 by a jungle pilot who was flying over the mysterious mountain area, the strange features found in the primeval forest are actually sinkholes, and one is considered the deepest cave in the world. Believed to have been formed as the result of erosion caused by underground rivers, Sima Humboldt was explored by an expedition in 1974 looking for botanical and scientific evidence of its creation. Because they have walls that are so large that one cannot exit from the bottom, hidden species of plants and animals were able to exist there and do not exist anywhere else on Earth. The sinkholes were later named by one of the participants in the expedition with their names Sima Major or Large Sinkhole and Sima Minor or Small Sinkhole. Sima Major, with a depth of 1,000 feet, 314 meters, and a volume of 750 million cubic feet, is the largest of the two. Its upper rim is smaller than its base, at about 1,200 feet or 350 meters wide, but at the base, it is about 1,600 feet wide or 502 meters. Roughly circular in form, various minerals and natural features are found, including stalactites, gypsum, and opal. But the unique features of the sinkholes did not stop there. Locals believe that an evil spirit lives in the jungle-covered sinkhole, known as Tepe. The spirit is believed to live in the cave where it hunts for humans and is often found devouring human flesh. With its remote location and the mystique surrounding it, it makes sense that mythological stories would be told about this wondrous locale in the Venezuelan rainforest. Number 8. East Scotia Ridge Isolated in the Southern Ocean, there exists water rich with strange and unusual chemicals jetting out from the ocean floor. This environment, though toxic to humans, is called the East Scotia Ridge and is home to many unique and interesting creatures. Just because it is one of the deepest places on Earth doesn't mean life cannot thrive there. In fact, a new type of yeti crab, various new species of barnacles, anemones and even a white octopus were discovered. Located about 100 miles to the east of the southern tip of South America, the East Scotia Ridge is an area where the seafloor spreads apart and allows molten rock to push upward, building a new crust. The spot where the water percolates to the cracks in the rocks is what attracts these creatures. In 2009 and 2011, researchers used a remote operated vehicle to explore the bridge which stretches 1.5 miles or 2.5 kilometers deep. 
After photographing the area and measuring the temperature, they brought up water for analysis and found it to be rich in chemicals that could support life from both microbes to larger organisms. Explorers believe the crabs and other life found there may feed on the bacteria spewed from the ocean floor. With evidence supporting the discovery of life on East Scotia Bridge that has been isolated for millions of years, researchers believe that the frigid waters around the area are what helped to preserve not only this massive hidden spot beneath the water's surface, but also the various creatures that are found there at the bottom of the sea. Do you think that there could be more undiscovered species in deep parts of the ocean rich with strange compounds from inside the Earth? Some of the most bizarre ocean creatures live there, and it is possible that a weird energy source like these vents is causing new and unusual forms of life to thrive. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Of course, while you're at it, remember to subscribe if you haven't already, and let us know which place you would like to visit in the comments below. Number 7. Palawan Highlands, Philippines In the Philippines, an area known as Palawan Island is home to lavish beaches, impressive caves, and wildlife that will take your breath away. A tropical rainforest that was rifted from the Asian mainland 32 million years ago, the Palawan Highlands have a diverse vegetation including beach forests, tropical lowlands, evergreen and semi-deciduous forests. Many groups of animals that are found there are not found anywhere else in the Philippines including pangolins, porcupines and some insects. Located on the other side of a channel that separates it from Borneo, new species are being discovered there all the time. In 2009, a giant meat-eating plant known as a giant planter was found there. So large that it can catch rats in its leafy trap, the plant is just one new species that was found in the highlands of central Philippines. During the same expedition, botanists found strange pink ferns and blue mushrooms that they hadn't previously identified. Eager to explore the area, botanists set off on a two-month expedition to scale Mount Victoria and find the exotic plant. Number 6. Bosavi Crater, Papua New Guinea Mount Basavi is right in the middle of a lush tropical jungle in Papua New Guinea. Long believed to be an extinct volcano with an enormous crater filled with the rainforest, researchers believe that it could contain a treasure trove of undiscovered species. With 3200 foot crater walls, animals would have been unable to scale the walls and climb out, leaving them there for thousands of years in isolation. Located in the inaccessible southern highlands, Western scientists have never been able to explore this place until 2009 when a group from the Museum of Natural History in Oxford went there to film an expedition. Flown to a nearby village, researchers took a four-day trek to the crater where they found rare species including a fruit dove, a pygmy parrot, an incredible hairy caterpillar and a unique jungle spider camouflaged as lichen. Iridescent beetles, unique bats and endangered amphibians were also some of the unique creatures found there. Deep in the remote highlands of the island, Mount Basavi is found on the Great Papayam Plateau, which is part of the Kikori River Basin, located in the Sulawesi Wildlife Management Area. Although not much is known about this area, the locals have detailed stories that tell tales of ash falling from an eruption in 1660 AD. Could this remote natural wonder have been created some 500,000 years ago? The area is inaccessible even to locals, with those in the native Kausa tribe who live there rarely visiting the area. Its remote location is the very thing that allows its incredible treasure trove of wildlife creatures to thrive. Number 5. Movil Cave, Romania Cut off from the world for millions of years, Movil Cave in Romania lies in the middle of a desolate field where it has remained isolated for 5.5 million years. Even though no light can travel there and the air is thick with harmful gases, many unique spiders, scorpions, woodlice and centipedes can be found there. It was discovered in 1986 by a group of workers in Romania who were testing the ground to see if it was viable for a power plant. They stumbled across the cave, but because it was in such a treacherous area, less than 100 people have ever been inside it. Those who have been there described their dangerous descent and painted a dark picture. To access the cave, one has to lower themselves by a rope 70 feet down a narrow shaft. The only light there is the one that is on your helmet and illuminates the narrow limestone tunnels that are covered in ochre-coloured clay. In pitch darkness, visitors find themselves in temperatures of nearly 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 25 degrees Celsius that eventually open into a central cavern that contains a lake. In 2010, microbiologists went into the cave to study the warm sulfuric waters and found unidentified species living there. With only 10% oxygen in the local atmosphere of this cave, visitors can only stay down for 5 or 6 hours before their oxygen levels drop too low and their kidneys start to fail. Once you're there, you must dive into the lake to find your way through narrow underwater passageways where you must squeeze through tiny gaps in the rock to find air pockets to breathe. 
If you can brave the conditions, you'll find many scuttling and slithering things, including 33 species that are found nowhere else in the world. From spiders to water scorpions and leeches to crustaceans, the animals that live there get their food from the water that drips down from stalactites and stalagmites overhead. Scientists later analysed the water in the cave and found radioactive cesium and strontium, two chemicals that were released during the 1986 nuclear accident at Chernobyl. Scientists believe this points to the fact that the waters are not coming from above, but must be coming from somewhere below. These chemicals also tend to erode the limestone, which makes the caves bigger. One can't help but wonder whether this will affect the creatures found there, or if it will unearth more that have yet to be found. If anywhere in the world has mutated radioactive creatures, it's this cave in Romania. Do you think it could be true? The place is so isolated, it seems like it might actually be possible. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Number 4. Mount Roraima In South America, a unique mountain nicknamed the Floating Island juts straight out of the earth. With sheer cliffs that are over 1300 feet tall and four sides that drop off sharply into oblivion, the plateau looks like it has popped out of the ground and floats in mid-air. The geological formation is known as the Tepui, a tabletop mountain of sandstone plateau, which name means House of the Gods. Researchers believe formations like this were created when sand settled and became rock at the bottom of ancient oceans 2 billion years ago. Compared to Mount Everest, which was only formed 60 million years ago, Mount Roraima is ancient. But how did it get its sheer cliffs? Scientists believe that after the sandstone formed, the oceans receded, eroding the sides of the plateau to create a giant shelf that was made of ancient rock. You might think that such a stark location wouldn't have many life forms there, but a 2012 research paper compared the DNA of four different tree frog species that were found in similar plateaus around South America. Interestingly, all of the frogs had a common ancestor that lived 5.3 million years ago, which means that there was some way for the creatures to migrate from the mountaintops on their own. But another 35% of the species found on the mountain are native only to that area, including a carnivorous plant known as the pitcher plant that traps insects in its digestive fluids. As researchers continue to explore the area, they are looking at a giant cave hidden within which is believed to have taken tens of billions of years to form and where they expect to uncover minerals and unique species of animals that have never been seen before. Number 3. Challenger Deep Nearly 35,000 feet, 11 kilometers below the ocean's surface, Challenger Deep is the deepest known part of the world's oceans. Named after the HMS Challenger, 19th century Royal Navy ship that circumnavigated the globe, Challenger Deep isn't actually a single spot on the ocean floor. It has a localized deep area like a trough, basin or trench, and Challenger Deep is estimated to cover an area of 129,000 miles squared, nearly four times as large as Lake Superior. But because of its harsh location, how can we really know that it's that point on Earth? Leave it to James Cameron, Hollywood director of Titanic, to figure it out. Using a custom-built submersible, he visited the Challenger Deep in the Mariana Trench, completing a solo dive to find out. The gap located between tectonic plates stretches 1,500 miles along the Western Pacific, the deep chasm that exudes over 15,000 pounds of force per square inch. That's over 1,000 times atmospheric pressure. Cameron's descent lasted two and a half hours. But why would anyone want to go to the lowest point on Earth? Apparently, the volcanic vents are a great place to identify new species, and finding them allows scientists to continue mapping the ocean floor. Deeper waters are mostly unexplored, and mapping them out would help scientists to find new areas that might contain undiscovered species, or even sources of energy, minerals, or other resources. Number 2. Son Dung Cave In Vietnam, the world's largest cave, Hang Son Dung, can be found. Inside, a lush jungle grows with water dripping from a ceiling 328 feet above ground level. Birds and macaque monkeys linger in the limestone in a world that looks like it's from a Jurassic Park movie. Found in the heart of UNESCO's Hong Na Ki Bang National Park, Hang Song Dung is one of the most captivating destinations in Southeast Asia. The cave, whose name means the Mountain River Cave, was first discovered in 1990 by a local farmer who was seeking shelter from the storm in the jungle. After noticing clouds and the sound of an underground river, he explored the large hole in the limestone. After losing his bearings when he returned to share the location with the British Caving Research Association, the location of the Hongdoon Cave would be lost for another 18 years. Luckily, the farmer later stumbled upon the entrance again in 2008, which he shared with researchers who later explored the cave, and in 2010, it was deemed to be the largest ever cave in the world. With heights of 650 feet and stretching three miles long, the main cavern is large enough to house an entire New York City block. 
With an incredibly unique and large ecosystem with its own localised weather system, some of the unique finds inside the cave are rare limestone pearls and the largest stalagmites ever found, stretching 260 feet tall. Foliage can grow in caves through collapsed ceilings known as dolines. The delicate ecosystem, though, is at risk for so many visitors wanting to come to this hidden gem deep in the Vietnamese jungle. A truly pristine environment, Hang Song Dun and its colossal caves are a beautiful example of nature unspoiled. Number 1. Lake Vostok Antarctica's largest subglacial lake, Lake Vostok, has been isolated from the surface for 15 million years. In 2012, a Russian team drilled a hole 11,000 feet deep down to the lake's surface, where water samples obtained from the hole were said to contain DNA that held unknown bacteria. Another attempt was made by a Russian team of ice explorers, who broke through to the lake buried beneath the thick Antarctic ice. One of the largest subglacial lakes in the world, Vostok was once a large surface lake in East Antarctica. Covered with ice for millennia and cut off from light and contact with the atmosphere, it is one of the most extreme environments on Earth and one of the largest lakes in size and volume. First discovered in the 1960s by a Russian geographer who was flying over the area and noticed a large smooth patch of ice above the lake, Lake Vostok is believed to hold many secrets still to be revealed. Using remote sensing techniques including seismic soundings and ice penetrating radar, scientists believe it is a lot shallower on one end than the other with the two basins separated by a ridge in the middle. Scientists also believe there could be a hydrothermal vent where tube worms and other oceanic creatures may dwell. After analysing samples taken from the lake, scientists believe that it may be home to a unique ecosystem unlike any other found on planet Earth. Studies of the lake's ice revealed DNA from a variety of organisms that are related to single-celled creatures found in lakes, oceans and streams but could mimic life on other moons and planets. With conditions similar to Jupiter's Europa, Lake Vostok seems to be thriving despite its harsh conditions. With temperatures in Antarctica colder than anywhere else on Earth, it seems mind-blowing that organisms could find a way to survive here. But more than that, they seem to be thriving in these isolated caves, and it is up to researchers to continue to explore and analyse these subarctic hidden treasures. Number 10. Giant Sea Worm in October 2018, a pair of divers off New Zealand encountered a giant 26-foot-long translucent glowing worm-like creature. Videographer Steve Hathaway and his friend Andrew Buttle captured footage of the bizarre animal, which Demi Guo likened to a giant windsock in a 2019 National Geographic article. The duo witnessed something called a pyrosome. Large enough for them to swim through, a pyrosome is not actually a worm, was a free-flowing colony of hundreds of thousands of zooids, which are small, multicellular filter-feeding creatures that feast on phytoplankton, animal waste particles, bacteria and other materials. These rapidly growing bioluminescent formations travel vertically to the water's surface at night to feed and are rarely seen. Researchers' knowledge of pyrosomes, including exactly how fast they grow, is pretty limited. Nicknamed sea squirts and cockroaches of the sea, the individual creatures that make up pyrosomes play an important role in tropical waters, where they not only feed, but also serve as food for other animals, including turtles and lobsters, who sometimes spend weeks at a time feeding on a pyrosome. Have you ever been diving? Or do you like snorkeling? Let me know in the comments below. Number 9. Mystery Truck a discovery by two divers back in 2019 may have just brought some closure to the disappearance of a man from 1993. As the story goes, two people were diving in the marina of Hat Rock State Park when they discovered a red pickup truck sitting 20 feet beneath the water. This happened in Oregon State, and the divers found the pickup truck just beyond the dock of an extremely popular recreation spot in Umatilla County. As you can imagine, the divers reported the truck, and the police eventually determined that the truck belonged to a Washington resident who had been reported missing in 1993. That means the truck had been sitting underwater for 26 years. The police even found the wallet and identification of the man who had been missing all those years. Oh yeah, and they found his skeleton inside the truck as well. According to one of the divers, they didn't think much of the truck when they first saw it underwater. It's pretty normal to find random things under the water. The same two divers even found a couple of guns in the water a few weeks before they found the truck. But for whatever reason, the divers memorised the licence plate and made an actual effort to report it to the police. Whether anyone will eventually be arrested in connection with the missing person, or if the police will declare it a murder, is yet to be seen. But hopefully his family will have closure. 
Number 8. Crashed Navy Plane Tyler Stalter is a 34-year-old firefighter who enjoys scuba diving in his free time. What he really enjoys is diving in the water to try and find shipwrecks. He uses a special sonar system to locate wrecks and then checks them out on his own using his diving gear. He has checked out the Monitor, a Civil War ironclad ship that sank in 1863. He also found an Italian liner that crashed into another ship off the coast of Nantucket and sank in 1956. But one of the coolest ones he recently discovered was a Navy plane that crashed off the coast back in 1943. As you can imagine, the bottom of the ocean is littered with airplanes, especially from World War II. When Tyler went out in search of a hidden shipwreck, he was sure surprised when he found a landing gear, a radial engine and two propeller blades sticking out of the mud. It wasn't a shipwreck, Tyler had discovered an airplane, but it was 200 feet deep and way too difficult to investigate thoroughly. It was dark, and the only way he could see was with a flashlight in his hand. After the dive, Tyler was determined to find out what kind of plane he'd found. But that was tricky. Many planes had crashed into the sea throughout the Pacific Ocean during World War II. His best guess was that the plane was a Dauntless that crashed in 1943. He had to search the records to find more information, and was disturbed to find out that the pilots of the crashed plane were never found. He may have not only found a crashed plane, but a graveyard too. Number 7. Man survives in sunken ship. This has to be one of the strangest discoveries ever. It all started when a tugboat sank while towing a Chevron oil tanker through the Delta waters of Nigeria. It was one of three vessels towing the tanker, but it unexpectedly sank, shocking the crew and giving them little time to get to safety. The waters were rough, and it wasn't until three days after the boat sank that divers went down to try and recover the bodies of the crew. By then, everyone had lost all hope. But the divers were absolutely shocked when they found a living man sitting inside the tugboat inside a small air bubble. According to the National Post, he had been sitting down there, about 100 feet below the water, for an entire three days, surviving on nothing but a bottle of Coca-Cola that he had found. The man had been ready to give up hope when he suddenly heard the sound of a boat and then something hammering on the side of his vessel. But he almost missed the divers. They were at the wrong end of the cabin, and the man could barely see their lights. In fact, the divers were almost about to leave. The trapped man had to dive into the water to get the diver's attention. He tapped him on the back of the neck, and the diver screamed, Corpse! Corpse! into his microphone. But then, as the man pulled on his hand, the diver realised he had found a living person, and began screaming, He's alive! He's alive! In the end, they were able to attach the poor man to an oxygen mask, and then stick him into a decompression chamber for 60 hours before safely returning him to the surface. He might just have been the luckiest man alive. Number 6. Caged Dugongs in Indonesia You may have seen the disturbing photos a few years ago of the Dugongs trapped inside an underwater prison attached to chains. It's such a disturbing image to see that it almost doesn't look real. But this is a very real story. It happened near a remote island in Indonesia. Divers had been swimming innocently enough when they came upon the two dugongs, which are some of the most endangered undersea creatures in the world, chained up inside two underwater cages. The divers were extremely shocked and upset to see this. They immediately went to find out what was going on, at which point they located a fisherman who had allegedly trapped them as his own personal tourist attraction, charging people money if they wanted to take pictures with the dugongs. This is like somebody trapping you and your mother in a cage and then charging people to take photos of you. It was pretty tragic, and the divers told the fishermen as such. Judging by the sad condition of the animals, and the ropes fastened around the mother's tail already making marks, the divers assumed that the mother had been caged for maybe months. They tried to convince the man to let them go, and he said he would, but he didn't. So, when the divers left, they posted the videos of the trapped dugongs all over social media and contacted local authorities. The very next day, the wildlife protection authorities came to the rescue, they found the exact location of the dugongs and set them free. Number 5. Sunken Treasure There is nothing better to find while diving than a sunken treasure. And that's exactly what happened to some Florida divers back in 2015. But the story goes back even further to around 300 years ago, when a ship from a Spanish treasure fleet sunk beneath the water off the coast of Florida. For 300 years, the vessel sat at the bottom of the ocean, until 2015 when a family of shipwreck divers discovered a little bit of its cargo and what they discovered would change their lives. According to Eric Schmidt, one of the divers, him and his family usually excavate empty holes and find nothing except beer cans. However, they stumbled upon an actual sunken treasure a mere 15 feet deep and only about 1,000 feet from the shore. 
Schmidt had been clearing a patch of sand when gold coins began popping between his fingers. Apparently, he had actually found a buried treasure under the sand at the bottom of the ocean floor. The treasure contained an outstanding 52 gold coins, 40 feet of gold chain, and 110 silver coins. In total, the collection is worth well over $1 million. The treasure came from the Spanish Tierra Firma fleet, which had been hit by a hurricane back in 1715. Eleven ships in the fleet had been passing Florida on their way back to Spain with a shipment of gold, and the flagship had been sunk. Ever since the invention of diving, the area where these ships sank has been extremely popular. But how much popularity will it have now with the treasure found? Probably even more. Number 4. Ancient Booze Gold and silver are great, but what about ancient cognac? A group of underwater divers recently salvaged hundreds of bottles of some of the rarest cognac and liquor in the world and they discovered it from a ship that had been sunk during World War I by a German U-boat. It took a full week for divers and their unmanned underwater vehicles to haul the entire shipment of booze to the surface from around 250 feet of water in the middle of the Baltic Sea. That is quite the haul. The divers recovered 600 bottles of extremely rare and expensive De Hartmann & Co Cognac and an additional 300 bottles of Benedictine liquor, which you might know better as the current brand name, Bacardi. According to the article from CNN, the divers don't know if the booze is drinkable yet, but you can bet that they are going to find out. They don't even know how much the entire shipment of booze is worth. How do you even get an estimate on such a discovery? The shipment came from a boat known as the Kairos, and it had been on its way from France to Russia when it was stopped by a German submarine in 1917 and destroyed. If that doesn't feel quite old enough for you, think about the fact that in 1917, Russia was ruled by Tsar Nicholas II. This was a long time ago. In fact, it's even believed that the expensive bottles of alcohol could have been meant for the Tsar himself. Number 3. Sea Unicorn A diver by the name of Daniel Botello recently embarked on a North Pole diving adventure with one motive, to locate the legendary unicorn of the sea, otherwise known as the narwhal. These majestic ocean animals are typically super shy around boats and people, and there are very few photographs of them ever taken underwater. However, this solo diver was intent on discovering an underwater unicorn. He was able to do this thanks to his resistance to the cold. Most typical divers can only stand the ice-cold waters of the North Pole for about half an hour at a time, but Botello was able to stay submerged for at least three hours. And it was during one of these three-hour dives that he finally discovered a narwhal, but it was no normal encounter. It turned out that the narwhal was following him around in the water, and so he managed to get all kinds of really stunning photographs of this elusive creature. A typical narwhal measures about 20 feet in length and weighs upwards of 3,500 pounds, but they are most famous for their long spiral tusk that sticks out of their face. While many people think it's a horn, just like a mythical unicorn, the ivory tusk is actually a single tooth that comes out from the male narwhal's upper lip. Each tooth measures about 9 feet in length, and they are used like jousting sticks between narwhals who are fighting for the rights to mate. They are also used to impress female narwhals. Males attract females by showing off the impressive size of their tusk. At the end of Botello's underwater adventure, he had lots of photos of the elusive narwhal, and he was also covered in ice burn blisters. He ended up being called back to the boat because it was simply unsafe to stay in such brutally cold conditions any longer. Number 2. Luxury Watch A luxury watch is not as exciting as an entire treasure from a sunken ship, but it's definitely better than nothing. This story comes from Greece, when two divers were using a metal detector to search for treasure while on holiday in the Greek islands. The British divers ended up discovering a Breitling watch underneath a rock off the coast of Corfu. It was a total fluke, but the watch could very well earn them several thousand dollars. It wasn't even that far underwater. It looks like another swimmer lost it and the watch became lodged underneath a rock. To give you a better idea of how much this watch is worth, a new one is typically valued at around $4,000. While this is definitely a far stretch from $1 million in gold booty, it's still a pretty amazing find for an average tourist with a metal detector. Number 1. Roman Shipwreck A completely random discovery by two divers has recently uncovered Israel's biggest underwater find of Roman artifacts in over three decades. The treasures were found by two divers near the port of Caesarea on the Mediterranean coast. According to a report by CBC News, the divers frequented the same spot several times a month and had never discovered the ancient Roman shipwreck before. It was a freak accident. They first found one sculpture, then another, then they realised they had hit the jackpot. There were all kinds of Roman cargo, from bronze statues to lamps, 
animal-shaped things and anchors, and even coins embossed with the faces of Constantine and Licinius. After some investigating from professional archaeologists, it is believed that the vessel that all these artefacts were uncovered from was broken and sank off the coast of Israel almost 2,000 years ago. This was around the time that the port of Caesarea, which had once been an important economic hotspot, also sank for unknown reasons. Have you discovered anything incredible while diving? Let me know in the comments. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.